Hey guys, Super X here. And tonight I'm gonna to make a really kind of atypical video. I do, I've done a lot of build vids and things along those lines. But this one's on an RTA. I know, you just probably hit the unsubscribe button. It's cool, I've been, a lot of people have been unsubscribing lately. But it's all right, um, I'm cool. This one is called the freaking Avocado by Geek Vapes. It's like 30 bucks. Got this thing from a company called Vaping Walrus. Recommended by somebody sitting here on a killer little sunbox moonraker. Um, check it out. This is a what is that? 0.57 ohm single vertical coil. I'm gonna show you how I did that and how I wick it. Just some little tricks and secrets. I'm just gonna give you a general overview of the atomizer and what it does. It's kind of a slick looking Addy, if you were to ask me my opinion of it. Um, I like the aesthetic of it. It has a lot of familiarity to one we know and love, called, for instance, the Mem Mods M Addy. They look, they look, I'm not gonna say they're a spitting image, but it, it, it has an all right appeal to it, this little deal, okay? It looks like a typical RDA, builds like a typical RDA. Waking was a little, little different because it's coming off a tank, but here's the vape I'm getting out of it at that many watts, okay? It doesn't take a whole bunch of power to, when you build it somewhat normally. No after sizzle, no popping when I'm vaping it. Keeps up at this many watts. I don't know if you need to get much higher. This is a very productive vape, I would say. Um, the, the bill does suck some juice. I don't know how big the tank is in it. It's a few milliliters, three milliliters or so. I'm finding myself filling it a couple times a day. Um, battery, it lasts about three tanks on a battery. Have this many watts. But I perfected wicking it so it doesn't leak and you want to watch this. I watched a couple videos on it, how people wick it. And um, none of them had a build like this in there. So my Wiccan is a little aconventional to go with the build. So why don't we um, check that out, how I build it. So this is the avocado. Give you a little presentation of it here from the outside. It does not come with this drip tip. This is a Loki Labs router tip. This is pretty much, it does come with some drip tips and I'll show them to you in a moment. But there's the outside presentation. As you can see, it's a nice small little glass tank. Very compact atomizer with basically an RDA with velocity style posts on top. It does have air um, that is capable of coming from both sides. Okay, it has this little ceramic block. Let's, um, again, there's the outside. Let's go ahead and take the, the top of it off. Let's have a look at what I've got inside it. This is what I wanted to show you that I've gotten there. Big old fat four millimeter vertical coil with kind of an interesting wick technique. You saw what it did on the vape. See about where it comes in on the ohms. Um, it's a, not a really low resistance build. I don't build low resistance build. I build highly efficient builds. So if I were to tighten up on this, you'll see that that's a parallel. Um, this a four millimeter inside diameter parallel contact coil inside this atomizer. Now, one of the things is this little ceramic deal comes out. I keep it in in just a single coil, but you can build duels on it very simply. Um, for my personal vaping preferences, this thing, this build sucks juice already. To put duels on it would probably suck even more juice, and I like being able to pull that out because you can fill it right through these holes from the top and put that right back in, that little ceramic thing. Now, for the box people in the house, you know, there's always somebody who likes to know about boxes. It just comes like this. I'm not going to go into any elaborate detail. I can give a rat's ass about boxes. It does come with a bunch of O-rings. comes with um, spare grubs. And it comes with these little tiny um, white ones. What you have to do with those, and it comes with this spare ceramic piece which is really cool and I'll show you this one that's dry so I'll pick up that wet one assuming I can get it out of here this little deal right here is pretty slick in and of itself because even though you have it over there reducing the chamber covering the holes 
um, it allows air to come through to the back of the coil. But this one has the little the little O-rings on it. See, I don't know if you could see that. Let me tighten it up. You got to put those little O-rings on it. On the one that's the one that's in there. On in my case, didn't have them. I had to put them on it, and they're in the bag. That's all. It also comes with the um, little little hex key to to um, use for the grubs. This is what size it is. Okay, it's like a point zero five. I use this. I don't mess with the hex keys, but it does come with everything you need. The hex key included. It comes with a opaque tank. It comes with a cloud tip, um, a chuff style tip, which I like to keep all my drip tips relatively the same size. And based on the bore of the atomizer, I looked at it, and um, you know, the time you put that thing in there, it probably does give you some more air options. But it comes with this little adapter that pops right out just pops out it's not threaded I've seen a video of one that that was threaded this one isn't threaded this one I purchased myself for purposes of um wanting to vape the hell out of it and that I've been doing so it takes any 510 that I've put in and I've used this Loki I've put in some meb ones but I like one with a little more height so this little tip fits fine and so remember when you get your little ceramic thing here to uh put your o-rings on them if they're not on there Again, you got a bunch of spare O-rings. So that's kind of it on the parts come with it. Um, again, in the box. So here we're looking at this. So what we want to do is let's let's just go ahead and wick it up. That's really what I wanted to show you. How I wick it and how I fill it. And wicking it, to me, I just thought through it a little. I've tried a little trial and error. And not everything was always perfect. So I found that it likes a loose wick. Now if you notice when I'm pulling this out, I've got a leg going down into each side under that door under that vert that's I love verts in pretty much any situation because they they vape to me they're very efficient they vape very efficient trick is you don't want a huge mushroom cloud of wick on the top and what I found is a thinner bit of organic cotton worked better than stuffing that coil full now what I want to do is just dry that coil out a little bit it's got a little bit of juicage in it it needs to uh, kind of come out of there before we can do our deal. Not looking to overheat the hell out of it so we can get on with the show here, so to speak. So now that we've got that sort of dried out, again, look at the velocity style posts. The grubs are accessible from the side. The cool thing about this vert is I built it so that the legs basically match up nearly perfectly with their respective um, holes. That's what I like about vertical stuff. Now you could probably do the same thing with a horizontal, but to me horizontal coils, there's certain addies that they shine in. Lately I've transitioned over to pretty much everything I build has a vertical coil. This is the largest diameter coil I've ever made in my life, and it's for a good reason. So it gets a bunch of wick enough wick in it that I could evenly split it between those two holes and I cut a little bit of it out so what's going down in there isn't quite as thick as what's in the coil so we're going to basically start with let's let's look at wick preparation here I got a sheet of organic cotton I'm going to kind of um zoom out a little on that okay this happens to be KGD so I'm going to gauge this right about a little less than a quarter inch of it okay because we're going, we're going kind of loose. That's how I'm getting that killer wicking. It keeps up. Again, I don't vape much above 25 watts. And if you were vaping at that high of a level, so I'm cutting the KGD with the grain. I'm cutting off me a nice little slice of it here, okay? The organic cotton with the grain. You want to go with the grain, okay, of the pad. With an atomizer with a tank this small, in my opinion, I mean, if you're a high wattage vapor, you're going to be filling this thing hell almost like dripper portions because this build right here already sucks the hell out of that juice okay so the first thing I'm going to do with my KGD is I'm going to I want to remove these outside layers so I just want nice fluffy cotton in there I want to just peel those off okay now you can wick yours however you like but this is how I wick mine I'm going to look at this strip right here I'm going to say to myself immediately that I think I cut that a little bit too thin okay so we're gonna go just. Uh, I'm just let me just double check that and see. I'm gonna fluff it up because it's gonna be nice and fluffy. 
not wanting to choke this coil in order for it to keep up, okay? And to wick properly. Yeah, that might be just a hair too thin. Maybe not. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just try it. Well, let's, you know what? We'll go a hair thicker. I mean, this stuff is not like you have to freaking know somebody to get it. We'll go a hair thicker on it. Probably right at about a quarter, exactly at about a quarter inch. Let's see, each of these dots on here is a quarter inch. It's a little tiny bit more. Again, I think what I did the last time was I was a little too vigilant and I peeled too much off on these outside layers too. Just want to get that outside layer off. That to me is what's full of seeds and everything else that I don't like in my vape. And I will go through and try and um, remove as many of the big seeds as I can from it. <clears throat> Just simply because I don't, don't like them in there. I don't know whether or not they affect anything. I think you can kind of taste them. But so that kind of leaves me with a nice piece of cotton like this. And I'll just look and try and um, remove any of the larger seeds that I could see. Here, with my little tweezers. And um, thing that looks obnoxiously huge, I'll tend to pull out. Now, the one reason I remove those outside strips there, too, is it kind of... Um, now you really just have one sort of piece that you're dealing with. Those outside pieces tend to kind of make their own little um, little strands. And it makes it different, more difficult to wick with this method that I'm going to try and demonstrate to you. Again, I hope you saw by that video and we'll vape it again after we're done. I don't need to turn the camera around. I'll just hit it. That it, it works really well at a 25 watts and below. Again, I don't know much that's going to keep up with a coil like that. I know much wicking you're going to do. It's going to keep up that it's not going to drain that tank <clears throat> like immediately. So there's our piece of wick. Got me a little damp paper towel here. What I'm going to do is what everyone does. There's no rocket magic science to this. We're just going to twist it up enough to get it into the coil. Okay, and one of the things, that's one of the things I've learned to do is hold the rest of the wick so you're not twisting it all and like mangling it all. Just a tip. Okay. There we go. I will remove that little deal right there. By now, four millimeter coil. We should be going right in, okay? Grabbing my tweezers. That's a 26 gauge parallel, by the way, if I didn't mention the gauge of it. And I just get it started with my tweezers. Now, as you can see, this is going in relatively easy. It's not really like straining that coil. And I'm going to pull it to about here. I try and cut this wet part off that I will with my fingers as quick as possible so I don't spoil the rest of the wick, okay? Right about there. Now here's where I get probably a little atraditional for you guys. I'm going to try and split this up to two even legs on the outside. And then I don't want them to be the full thickness of the wick. You want to kind of take your time. You don't want to shred this stuff. I just want two little pieces on the outside that... Again, this is something we'll just take our time doing. Um, if you're a video scrubber, don't scrub past the most important part. We just I just want some little like tendrils almost going down in there to pick up the wick. Because if that wick is, uh, my, my theory, I have my little theories, if that wick is real thick, it just kind of might be more prone to holding the wick. Also, while I'm doing this, I look and see if I see any more big obnoxious seeds that may or may not be in the juice path or close to the coil where they'll just kind of burn and get them out. So when I'm kind of done, I wind up with some kind of tendrils hanging off here of wick just to pick up juice and quickly get it up there and not take a lot of time. And then I will um, trim this third wheel here off. Okay, so we wind up with the little piece of wick that's down there on the bottom that sort of can block too if you will block that um tighten up here for you it could sort of block anything that might come out of that air hole but you want to be careful when you're doing this get this wick spread out so you don't cut those little tendrils and you're just cutting off this piece right here if you do happen to cut any of it like i kind of did a little tiny bit of 
you just want to kind of get rid of that. There's no need for it to be to be there. Okay, and just kind of comb this out a little bit. Getting anything that's stray, fly away, loose off there, because that's just going to go down into your tank. So now I wind up with this nice thick piece of wick, not choking that coil. I wind up with kind of a little stopper here that would keep anything from going in. And basically these little pieces are just going to go down in the well. So I'm going to kind of gauge about how much wick I need here, kind of like this, to get down in there. I want it to reach the bottom, but I don't want it to, like, drape too much on the bottom. But I'd still rather have it drape a little bit more on the bottom, so to say, than to um, not make it down there. This is where you just take a little more time wicking. Get your wick right. Coil building is easy. I find that this did not, I didn't like it as much with kind of a, um, just a single wire coil. I think it likes a lower resistance build. I try and build as high a resistance as possible. I just find that usually vapes better, but this one just seemed to like a nice, um, for instance, here's a regulated mod. Let's just do a little for instance here. It's a one ohm build in there, okay? 26 watts, one ohm build. That's that. This one with a one ohm build, that would be basically a single wire, single 26 gauge, about that many winds. It didn't work as good. So I've tried some different configurations. So now what we're going to do is just take these little tendrils, push them down in these holes. Okay. Again, nothing rocket science here, but I just wanted to kind of turn you guys on to how I found this vert just kills in this thing. Just absolutely destroyed the horizontal. Okay, and you can see they reach pretty much down to the bottom. What's important is when you put that wick in, that's another thing I want to kind of stress to you, is you want to leave, the reason we're using thin tendrils is you want a nice bit of room beside these holes for, um, for it to wick. If you choke those holes, it's not going to wick, okay? It's just going to stay down in there. So that's another reason why this is pretty damn efficient because of that. So we're not choking any holes. So again, i got a nice barrier here to keep anything from coming out of the air hole. By trimming that third piece off, I've got some nice thin tentacles, tendrils of wick going down in there. Now we're going to trim the top. Here's another place I take my a little bit of my time because I'm doing it with a purpose. I don't want a fat mushroom cloud on top. I don't want it too close to the coil either. So I'll wind up with something about like that. But I'm not done yet. Okay, so before you turn off the video and go start wicking, let's look at the wick. Let's look at it. Let's look at it in detail. I want to make sure there's not really any wick. My most important thing is I don't really want any on this plane right here where air is going to be coming up this coil. And... Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. This wick is already starting to pretty well. It's starting to saturate already, which most of the videos I've watched on these tanks, that wick isn't even close to saturating. You got to saturate the hell out of it. Now I will add a little. I will supplement it with juice, but you can see that that's already starting to dampen up because that's how efficiently it's wicking. Okay. So again, what I'm looking for is not. I don't really want a bunch of wicks. Air's coming in here. I don't want a bunch of wick obstructing that. Um, where it's coming up over that. That's another reason that makes it so efficient, in my opinion. Again, these are all just opinions. I'm not a scientist. Didn't even stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night, but I like a freaking killer simple vape. This atomizer, rebuildable tank atomizer, provides that for 30 freaking dollars, okay? And it's stainless steel. There's no brass, and it's I'll just hit this up with a little juice. And while I'm at it, I'll refill the um the deck and that, that refill the tank and I that's done just by you'll see it rise it's pretty no-brainer stuff here this isn't brain trust material you do not need any type of a degree to do that and now my tank is full okay it's pretty well saturated and wicked now what you want to do is 
I forgot to do this once, but you don't want to forget. And again, you could hang another coil off the side. But I would just almost have like a pipeline of juice attached to it because it, it drains quick enough already with that single coil. Single vertical coil on there, 4 millimeter, Somewhere around 0.6 ohms-ish. That if you were to stick um, another coil on there, <laughs> I think you would... Um, you would just find yourself to be a more less efficient vape. Let's just put it like that. And we're going. We're all about efficiency and great vape. That's kind of my my whole deal. Don't sacrifice the vape for efficiency, and I don't sacrifice efficiency for vape. So let's pop this puppy back together. Remember, let's look at a killer feature of this. That air hole comes through and hits the coil. Now without, just say you built a, a dual too. I think filling it would be more of a pain in the ass. Don't you think so? Now looking down in there, you could see that there's room around these holes. You saw that the wick was much thinner than those holes. That's a, I think that has a lot to do with the key to this build. So this probably wouldn't be a good video to scrub. You want to just understand the method to my madness. Trial and error. I've been vaping this for a few days now. and My error and trial will help you succeed and get this little top put it on here the test of a good wick is always how it sounds after a couple of vapes you know and need might need to break in for a second you might hear a little hissing and popping you may not let's widen out a little bit here get the tools out of the way Let's just screw it again back on the Killer Moonraker Sunbox E8 DNA 40 Moonraker. I like my air hole in this case facing sort of the main air hole facing sort of in the direction of my natural tilt. That way it's always I naturally tilt them on like this. That way it's always sort of um kind of feeding juice towards the wicks even as the tanks run and dry Again, there's the presentation there it is inside the mod there's your your build there's your watts let's take it for a little rip Pretty decent, huh? No problem whatsoever keeping up. And there you go. And as I'm tilting it, it's kind of keeping juice coming towards me. That's pretty much that. The avocado by geek vape check it out super x saying see ya